If you told me that halfway through the tour you got a rental car and just drove behind the bus, it would yeah. not surprise me. I, when I stand I in front of people, it. things just sometimes yeah, just come out of my mouth. You can have a go on the butt plugs if you like, Lauren, yeah, you've got a bum too. So. Yeah, everyone's got one. Fine. But we, I mean, we'd gone to and a few people, we had people approach us and they're charging $8,000 for a reel. You're listening to the Pepper and Me podcast around the dinner table with Cherie, Cam and Lorne where we chat all things food and business. Right, welcome back to the Around the Dinner Table podcast and welcome to season two. So we've made it back. Season two, who would have thought? It's quite random to start a podcast season two in November, (laughs) but there's really no rhyme nor reason. No, there isn't. So, we just needed a break. Yeah, we just needed a break we're and we're back away, now. And now we're back. Yeah, we're back. And everyone's missed us. Well, one person's told me. <laughs> one yeah. person missed us. One. I've missed you guys saying rogue things on the podcast. Have you? Yeah, you I listen? really like those clips. Oh, good. I've listened to a few of them. They're pretty funny. Oh, um, do you prefer the clips though? Do you just watch the clips? No, I both. If, oh, you if, to if I like the clip enough, I'll watch. I'll listen uh, to the actual episode. Oh, good. Yeah. That's what it is. That's eh? good to yeah. know. Okay, so we need we a need, like, need bit of teasers. You need yeah. to plan out two rogue things. Per podcast you can't plan you? rogue things they just accidentally come out of my mouth yeah, like do you remember at, lo- at my book launch last year yes. <laughs> that was one the of the most best nobody could that, forget oh, that. Most that was rogue the... thing came out of my mouth in front of a hundred of my friends and family yeah. Have we and talked, i was not and i was that? sitting opposite campbell and i he was like tears <laughs> of laughter and he had his he's like holding his whole face i think that, like, i think just like oh <gasps> like pull it and there's he's a photo just, of like, him mate there's yeah. a photo of him right at the was taking yep. photos and Campbell just like shot like yep. that. There's like four photos and he's like shocked eyes and then his jaw just <laughs> dropped and then his hands oh. went over his mouth. So, so I haven't have I talked have I talked about that? You haven't talked about it on the podcast. No. So no. what I said was I was just like low key, not really do, like seeing this guy who was way too old for me, and he'd come to the book launch, but I was really awkward about it because mum and dad were there, and I was like, I didn't really want. It. He's not, you know, you're not your boyfriend, but situationship. you're like situationship. Yeah, situationship. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, but it was actually like with me the night that we met him. <laughs> <laughs> I this remember, I remember going we went home, and I was like, I might hook up with that old dude. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part about that night was that I can be quite bad at like. Getting cues, oh. like understanding sort of what's right. happening on and happening yeah. in the room, and I'm always just oblivious and rah, out there having yeah. a good time. And it wasn't until I came back from getting some <laughs> drinks of water and I came downstairs and I was like, "Oh, they're pashing." <laughs> 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 And I was like, oh, hi, guys. And she was like, he was had his hand on my leg the whole night. I'm like, didn't notice. <laughs> anyway, and I was like, oh, this is absolutely not happening. You're so old. And then I remember, like, to wake up the next morning and I was like, it'd be interesting to, like, look out with an old dude. And I'm in my single phase. This is last June, so a year yeah. and a half ago. I was like, I'm in my single phase. Like, I'm just going to, yeah. I might just give it a nudge and you, like, so, you're yeah. so encouraging of yeah. anything. Oh, I- you're like, yeah, give it a go, yeah, Cherie. Yeah, yeah. Like... <laughs> Anyway, so four months after that, we're at the book launch and I was really awkward about the situation. I was like, this is so... And I stood up and, like, went to start my speech. So Dad, my dad introduced me and he's like, oh, here's Cherie. And he'd forgotten to say something and I was, and he's like, oh, I'm getting old. And I was like, oh, not as old as my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and the entire room just, like, lost it. And they're like, was, who is it? Because they didn't... So funny. They didn't know who I was talking about firstly. Oh, no, but there was only one other old dude like that in the whole room. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't like it was very, it wasn't like it was a room full of 50 other old dudes. You're oh, who it could it be? <laughs> I know. And it was like absolutely like, I thought we could all laugh it off, but you never saw him again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Imagine you being like, like I was like, so right, you can just sit, like, just come casually to this event, just sit in the back, no one will know, and then like call them out in, the, in front of the entire room. It was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Good. Yeah, it was. Um, oh, oh, yeah. I enjoyed I it. When you, I, when I stand I in front of people, it. things just sometimes yeah just come out of my mouth, <laughs> like that. Anyway, not much of a. Do you know why? But do you know why I didn't see him again? It's because he had a girlfriend the whole time that I didn't know about. That's yeah. why. He, then he was like, oh, my God, she's called me her boyfriend. I need to, like, disappear from this situation. Yeah. Did he Amy, disappear? I thought you guys kept seeing each other no, after that. No, no, no. Mm. Oh, no, right. Yeah, he, he, like, messaged me pretending that he was really upset about what I said and then I um, 
he, and then someone else told me, he's like, no, no, he's just like, been, he's like, has this That's girlfriend. That's right. Yes. And I was like, oh, yeah. right. That was wild. But had you been seeing each other for longer than four months? Like, I feel like it was longer. Well, we got, it was that June when you were back. Yeah. And that was November, yeah, early okay. November. So what's that, like five yeah. months maybe? Yeah. Yeah. It was very casual, but. Well. I just. It was definitely a situation shift. It was a situation yeah. shift. But that's what happens. Everything's a learning anyway. So, yeah, old dudes. Sharp learning curve. Oh, here's, the, here's the takeaway from this. Old dudes are no better than young dudes. Yeah. They're all <laughs> shit. <laughs> all guys are the same. All the same. Okay. Anyway, I haven't even introduced the podcast. We're no. here with Vivian. <laughs> We're here with my friend Viv Conway. She's back on a two-day work yeah. trip from Sydney. Um, and we've just been filming some content, so we thought we'd get back onto the podcast and get back into season two. Yeah, you kind of have to. Well, we've got a lot to catch up on. So, Viv, so much. This, Viv, this episode's going to be so random. It's going to be so <laughs> random, but that's fine. Right. Three <laughs> episodes, as we talk about, like the last three months, are going to be all over the show. It will be. Yeah, we'll just be dribs and drabs, but that's fine. So, Viv owns Girls Get Off, which is the company, and you guys are here to empower women, and you make sex toys for women and mainly women, eh? Mainly women. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can have a go on the butt plugs if you like. Lawn, you've yeah, got a bum a too. So yeah, everyone's got one. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Pop that in there. <laughs> little peach play. Yeah. <laughs> Which is maybe it seems like a random guest on the podcast. <laughs> a little bit um, left field. But, but I've been at your dinner table many times. Oh, before, many times. So what's, yeah, what's and the difference? We've been yeah. friends for a long time mm. and I've been there just to see your business grow from the idea yeah. to now. And you've been around since Pepper and Me was. Tiny too, so yeah, yeah. We'll talk about business and sex. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah and food. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a great combo. All those three. That's like my three favorite things: sex, <laughs> food, and a podcast. <laughs> business, <laughs> oh, sex. <laughs> business, sex, and food. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good three. Yeah. Oh, a life. life triangle. Yes. Yeah. That's three, three most important things. And your children, obviously, but you just yeah. kind of. They can be balance in the middle. them all. Yeah, be <laughs> everything else is a balance. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we will... Um... This is going to be an awkward <laughs> season two, episode one for me, isn't it? Look, I'm yes. honoured to be on episode one of the podcast. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, you're not going to have much to contribute, but that's pretty I standard, think, well, <laughs> to be fair. So. <laughs> well, Lauren's just been... Um, you've just... Now the proud owner of a Missy as well, so yes, look out. Look, I said could be out. another baby on the cards. He's on like the loose. Or not. Yeah, Lawn's gonna be on the loose with a Missy. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. So what's been on your plate? <laughs> <laughs> right, I just I think I I haven't talked about Italy at all, and it's the further away it gets. The more you forget about it? No, nah, no, nah, not really. It's just gonna be. It's just it, it becomes irrelevant, doesn't right. it? So yep. I think we'll do like a quick overview of Italy. I haven't told you about it, Lee, anyway. So, yeah. and then we will chat other stuff, other stuff, stuff. Cool. Um, so yeah, I went on my trip for three weeks. Um, still have a boyfriend, like touch and go, but still <laughs> that that's still on. So that was like one of that was the main question that, that we posed question, at yeah. the end of the last season. Like, will we survive? There was one night he slept on the couch. Um, so what was your the, fault or his yeah, fault? what was um. You would never say it was your fault. No, you I even actually if it was completely do your fault. admit you were... that it was no. It, oh, yeah, but, uh, I don't know actually. We were like we'd had too much to drink. It was the only night that we drank because I don't usually like to drink when I eat, and we it was just one night that we both sort of it's drank. just one or the other. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. too much. Yeah, either drink too yeah, much. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened. Anyway, I woke up. He was on the couch like with a towel <laughs> over him. <laughs> And I just looked at my laugh. I was like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for. too. <laughs> I should have taken a photo of him. Like, just, uh, Did he like, have any clothes on? I don't remember. I don't remember. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a drama. Anyway, so food. The food in Italy is uh, like, um, so we got there, got off the plane and just absolutely like, it was in heaven, just heaven. It, everything was so amazing. Like all the, oh, just so good to be able to travel. Like mm. I haven't travelled to the other side of the world since I used to work on the yacht. So it's been 10 years. So came home, had got married, had kids, and I haven't been back to Europe since then. So uh, everything's just amazing. Everything's just so amazing. Um, and I hadn't been to Italy specifically before. So the food, like I think 
can be incredible. I think you do need to know where to go though. Mm. Like you, you need, need to, to know where to go. Out. Yeah, you do because there is also some pretty average food too. And it, right. the food's so simple there. Everything is so simple. Like you're not going to get a pizza with 10 toppings. You're not no. going to get a meat lover's pizza with barbecue no. sauce. Like everything's so simple that it needs to be it's done really toppings. It needs well. To be so fresh. It needs to be fresh. It needs to be like just cooked, mm. cooked well. Um, took, like Matt was quite shocked at how al dente the pasta all is. And yeah. I, I do like fresh, then it can be like al dente in a different way. Whereas when you're cooking dried pasta, it's like yeah, there's a lot of dried pasta there as well. Like a lot yeah. of dried pasta. Yeah, like right. I said, like you, yeah, you either go and line up for an hour outside yeah. a restaurant right. that you know is going to be incredible and you've researched right. and you, or you kind of take a chance and it's hit and miss. Right. Um, so we had the first night because we actually had mum and dad were over That's there right. just yeah. coincidentally, but we'd been eating. We had been eating all day. We'd had like um, we'd gone for arancini someplace and then we went to the next place. We went to the Al Antica. It's a sandwich shop and they do these massive slabs of focaccia and they just whip them open and. They, just shave to order mortadella and prosciutto and all that sort of stuff and then load it on your sandwich and, and you can get like rocket or tomato. Like so simple, but mm. everything was – that was probably – that was a really overhyped. Like the line was three blocks right. away, but it was worth it. Yep. That was 100% worth it. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Doing so good. Yeah. Someone's <laughs> trying to sneak around in our studio yeah, really, really I, quietly yeah, and keep the light just, just right at the fell end. over the light. Nice. Well done. Yeah, so that was great. Um, and then we met up with mum and dad because they were in Italy randomly at the same time. So we went out it for dinner. It was so lucky that you there. managed to line that up. It like, was lucky, yeah. We went to a really cool, um, that was our first like aperitivo experience. So they have this full like two or three hours where you, you order a drink and you yep. get, they just bring snacks to the table. Right. So there's like bowls of olives. Amazing. Oh, I just, it's what, why do we not do that in New Zealand? Like aperitivo hour, like you buy your drinks, your drinks are a little bit more expensive, but you're having like a couple of apple spritz or whatever and you get a bowl of olives, a few bits of bread. And they just keep bringing you stuff? And you just, yeah. But, yeah, everyone's different. Nuts, but you have to keep buying drinks. Or is thing. it like a set price or? There's no set price, no. They just they bring just you snacks. Charge you at the end. Yeah, it's, it's like, like, no it's like a happy much. hour. It's like free food. Yeah, free food out. Oh. But you didn't get. I don't think we ever got charged for an aperitivo food oh. snack. Oh. Yeah. Oh. No, never. It's aperitivo hour. Like that's a whole thing, and there's okay. whole bars sort of. Yeah, and you so, get yeah, it. It's you get it everywhere, but, snacks, but it's but often it's like yum snacks. It's yeah. like wedges. No, but sometimes it's like a bowl of like they have these like crispy cracker. It's in between a cracker and a chip. And yeah. You just sort of like might be a bowl of those and some olives. Right. Or well, sometimes it's quite elaborate. Yeah. But it's just great. So you have that and you have dinner much later. But, um, yeah, there was, no, there was no way mum and dad were waiting in line for an hour. Yep. And I was like, I knew that. I was like, I'm not going to push this. I really want to wait in line for an hour. But we'll go to the first place we saw. And it was pretty, it was like, oh, it's pretty average. It's kind of like, yeah, it wasn't great. But then I was pretty firm on that. After that, I was like, we're only eating where I, <laughs> like, I right, made research. sure to research yeah, and I think that that's quite necessary. But TikTok's the most amazing resource if you're travelling and you want to know where to go to eat. Because you okay. can literally watch. You're not reading a four out of five star. Like, you're literally you're watching, watching the, the food experience. come out and yep. you're watching the drinks. You're seeing the price list. You're seeing everything. It's, it's amazing. Like, the most underrated. Well, like, it's not really underrated because we all know about it. But, like, yeah, everyone will be doing it soon. But it's it's – you don't normally think, oh, where am I going to go for, like, travel advice? TikTok, mm. it's like – but it'll be everything soon. Like oh, it's getting more and more and more like business advice. Yeah. Everyone's I think we're just conditioned to Google, right? Yeah. But like yeah. even, even before Googling, sometimes chat GPT is better. Totally. TikTok, True. TikTok. But I think TikTok's getting more searches than Google now. It wouldn't surprise me, but like TikTok for – I've always found TikTok for trying to find something that you've seen before is shocking. Like if you're trying to search oh. for a video – and it's like, I remember the video of the cat with the thing and this thing happened. It's like, how do you find it? Because nobody's doing, ca like, captions or um Can't you go into it if you liked it? Can't you see what you've liked? You probably didn't like it. Ah. Uh, or probably didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. But, like, the search yeah. is quite bad. Like, yeah. people yeah. need to either step up their game with writing descriptions that are more mm. meaningful for, like, what people are going to search and actually thing? use it as, like, a thing. Mm. Use it as, like, a, like SEO. Mm. You know, it should be, like, an SEO tool. Like, mm. putting your stuff in there as if it was Google or as if it was your website because I think that's going to become more and more relevant. Might never show up on Google, but there's people on TikTok that are searching, obviously, mm. Interesting. for content. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, yeah. If you if you want to find a specific video, then mm. yeah, that's going to be hard. Whereas if I'm like, right, I'm in yeah, broad, this part of Rome. Part of Rome what do I do? Fo- and food, mm. and then just yeah, just put the time in. Anyway, so it was great. We had an incredible few days in Rome. Like it was just amazing. Loved it. That's probably one of my. That was probably probably my favourite place, possibly. And then we hopped on the tour. So we went on the Trafalgar tour, and the Trafalgar has gifted me the tour um, to do research for a tour that I'm going to be hosting next year. Cool. Yeah. Did you know about that? I did know about that. <laughs> oh, that was a good I'm reaction. Just oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I must admit that we got on the tour bus and I um, immediately panicked. I was like, oh my God, I'm on a bus and I'm going to be on a bus for the next 10 days for a long time with people in their 50s. And I'm like, I've just, I'm quite, um, I don't like boundaries around me, you know? <laughs> you know how ADHD. You know how ADHD is like really trending right now, yeah, and yeah, people forget yeah. that Sheree's being diagnosed, yeah. and it just all makes sense, yeah. you know. And that was before it was trending. Yeah, no, I was like, going di- to properly <laughs> diagnosed, but yeah, the I mean the signs are there, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I thought you were. Oh, uh, they did say yes. I thought they said someone you said yeah, ADHD. you probably have ADHD. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. But right. then um, they're like, do you want to do anything about it? I was like, no, I'm actually fine. <laughs> Get me off this bus. Yeah. <laughs> Don't put boundaries around I, me. I did. I, I did. I really freaked out because I'm like, I, I I don't know why. I don't know why. And I... <laughs> I remember you messaging me or telling me or something like on the first day you were like, I just genuinely have no idea how I'm going to last on this bus. Yeah. Like it wouldn't surprise me if like, if you told me that halfway through the tour you got a rental car and just drove behind the bus, it would yeah. not surprise me. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Like, that's literally. what I was thinking about doing. It, I, and I, I don't know what it was. It was just, I think it was just was that lack of freedom. I'm like, I'm in Europe for the first time yep. in Italy mm. and this is what I want to see and do. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's, it's hard on a tour. Mm. It's hard. Mm. And so, yeah, anyway, we, we did it. And you, you ease into it after a few days. I was like, God, we met so many cool people. Everyone was so great. And once you, like, ditch your, well, I don't know, uh, like, everyone's old. Your yeah. Preconceived, um, preconceived ideas. ideas. Everyone was literally amazing. And we, we made heaps of cool friends. Even, like, the people in their 70s. There was, like, a, a priest from Ireland. And, like, he would have been, like, 85. And oh, that is but amazing. everyone was just a good vibe. And we actually had heaps of fun with them. And it was cool to meet them. And then... The, the travel on the bus is hard. It's I think I think that's the hardest part is because it's a tour that covers six or so seven or eight hard. places in yeah. ten days. You know you know you're spending a lot of time on a bus traveling, which you're going to be doing regardless. If you go you're going if you're going on a train, then you go to the train station, you wait for your train, you hop in your train. The train yeah, goes well, faster, it's, it's like but then you Uber on the other end, and you you're still yeah. doing the same travel. It's just mm. like whether you want to travel and try and do as many places as, in a short time as you want, or do you want to just go to Italy, do Rome, and do mm. Venice, and do five days mm. in each place, something like that. Mm. But it's a pretty cool overview of the whole country, and I feel like I do have a really good overview of the whole country. And I came home and went back to Trafalgar, and I I was pretty blatant. I said, I don't think I can host a tour like that because right. uh, all of these things. And I was like, do you still want to do a tour with me? I'd, I'd have to be. A, I'm going to take full control of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they're like, absolutely, you tell us what you want to do, yeah. and we'll do that. Okay. And I was like, okay, cool. perfect. So I've gone back to them and said, right, I think we do. If we pick three spots, we're not doing any eight-hour drives. I was going to say how long were the drives because that would stress me out. The thing that eight made, hours. Well, the thing that made them longer is we stopped at little towns along the way and you'd stop for an hour and have a look around or whatever. Or you'd do right. – there were so many toilet stops and stuff like that and you get oh. 40 people off the bus to go to toilet. Back on the bus, it's an hour. Oh, so he's, yeah. this is me. I was absolutely um, – I showed Matt my email. He's like, oh, that's quite bold. <laughs> I was like, right, no toilet stops. <laughs> No toilet stops. Get a bring, a bring a bag. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, no one wants to stop at the gas station on the side of the road five times yeah. in two days for an hour. It's well, such a waste of your time. Yeah. I'm like, right, efficiency. And you want to be, you want to get to see a place properly, yeah. I think, rather than trying to do 12 places mm. in Italy in 10 days. So I, I think I'm, I've gone back to them and I've said, right, let's do four days in Rome, four, five days in the Malfi Coast and four, five days in Sicily. Yeah, There'll be like a, a sort of Rome to Amalfi, maybe four hours, uh, and then Amalfi down to Sicily. That's one big, 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 big day, and then and then you get the rest of the time in Sicily. And I've said like, because I just love being by the beach. I just need to be by the water. 
So I didn't really have any interest in sort of... Inland stuff. Not as much. There's some incredible historic towns, which are amazing, but this is a food tour. Mm. I'm like, right, we want olive oil farm, we want this mozzarella farm, we want as many seaside markets, we want every food market that we can go to, we want to go to Italy, we want... Mm. We want to go to the small restaurants. I was like, every single restaurant we would go to, we went to on the tour. That's not happening <laughs> <laughs> because they because were... they do they cater for tour buses. Uh, the restaurants we went to, so yeah. it's forty people and you get served your food, and it was fine. But it was like in out, and I heard the tour guide even say like, just get this as fast as you can, so everyone can get out sightseeing. I was like, no, it's no. a food tour. Yeah. So, the, so my the tour I went on wasn't a food tour. Right. So that this is, uh, but this is going to okay. be a food tour. So yeah. I'm like, well, I, that's like literally the last thing I want on my tour yeah. is to be rushed through a meal. Like, let's just find beautiful spots, let people pick off the menu, yep. or or do we if we can't fit that many people in a small restaurant, then we're going to split up into groups yep. because we need to see the real Italy, which is those hole in the wall places, those like tiny little family run restaurants. Mm. They don't want a tour bus in there. Yep. So we're not going to tell them. <laughs> so we're just going to show so, up. So, yeah, so that's what I've gone back to them. They're like, that actually sounds really great, really cool. And I was absolutely brutal on the feedback. First day he shows yeah. up to a little hole yeah. in the wall and they yeah. just go, nah. <laughs> yeah, wow, that screws the plan. Hey, guys, we're going to nah, wait here for an hour and uh, then we'll get in. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to travel. I want to stand yeah, in line yeah, for yeah. two hours. <laughs> you know, if you're going to go on a food tour because you're a foodie, Yes. You're prepared to do that. Yeah. You want the best food experience. Yep. So if you want to go to the Vatican and stand three hours in line for the church, which is what we, we, we did, like that is not yep. for me. That's not happening on my tour. You can go to the Vatican on your spare time. So I did say that. I was like, put spare time in Rome in there. So if people want to go and do that stuff. They can. They can. Yeah. Um, so but rosary beans blessed. Yeah, I got some holy water. Nice. Yeah. One euro. <laughs> I throw it what around. What did you do with it? Too much, just yeah. Splash it on, love it on every day. <laughs> Yeah. Two days later, Matt's on the bed, yeah. on the yeah. couch. On the couch. <laughs> yeah, because um, yeah, you do it once and you're like, cool, tick that off the box. But, you know, I, I don't know, it depends if you're into it or not. There was some, I really loved um, Assisi, St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, yeah. I thought that that was incredible, that church. It was the quietest, cute little town. Really, really loved that. And we stayed at the monastery with the monks and that was great. Great. So there's heaps, heaps of other great things. Anyway, so um, my tour details should be released in the next few weeks. Exciting. Yeah, and uh, it sounds like we were leaving um, the 26th of August. There you go. Yeah. So Epic. put it in your yeah. calendars, keep an eye out, and we'll um, yeah. drop and a I little think, bit of promo, hashtag ad. Yeah, yeah, hashtag ad. I think um, I'm doing my absolute best to make it, you know, like as, give as much freedom, lots of beach time, lots of like cocktails on the beach and like... Mm. But um, it, it's still a tour, you know. It's still going to be a tour. So if you're like me, you know, don't come and I don't want anyone to come and be disappointed. That's like the last thing I would want. So I'm like, let's give people as much detail. Let's just let's just make it as chill as possible and have a good time. Yep. Yeah. So that's going to be coming out in the next few weeks. Yeah. How exciting! So that was that's kind of my roundup. Yep. From nice. Italy. Nice. Yeah. Am I coming? Can I come? You can come to, you, if you pay. <laughs> <laughs> it's content. You're right, it's work expense. Yeah, well, Luke said we should make it into a TV show, which would yeah. be quite cool idea. Well, let's do it then. Take a camera. Like, you'll be allowed three hours away from, three, sorry, three weeks away from. I'll try. i try. Yeah? <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> right, talk to Viv. Have you got anything that you want to update over the last few months? Um, no, I bought another barbecue. Did you get another one? Yeah. Epic. Uh, yeah. A little one? How many oh. have you got? So this is the what, fourth, fifth? This is a little, like, the Weber Go Anywhere. Because oh. uh, I've seen some people pulling off some handy. really cool stuff with it. Um, and it's is got it a, so many accessories. Is it electric? No, no, it's charcoal. Oh, okay. But um, there's this other brand that has, like, started putting out accessories for it. So you can get, like, a little extender that makes it taller and you can put on a rotisserie for this little, like, camping barbecue, essentially, a charcoal camping barbecue. And it's so cool. Um and what else? I don't think I've done, uh, you know, cooked some more pork edda, didn't catch the barbecue on fire. Yeah, yeah. well, you've, well, yeah, you've not got much then? No. Yeah, perfect. Okay, well, we'll talk to Viv then about, yeah, what's been happening with Girls Get Off? What's What's been happening with Girls Get Off? Should we talk about marketing? Because um, yeah, sure. we've just sort of started that conversation before a little yeah. bit about reels and, and making content and how we've, like, we're all on this journey, like this content journey and trying to provide people with what they want to see while keeping it 
in a budget, like our budget. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really hard when you – we were talking about when you start a business and you're all gung-ho and yeah. you've got all the energy for it. I think the key word is, like, energy. Mm. And then it's really also really, like – real scrappy and like fast and dirty and like look how many cameras are looking at us yeah. right now know. you know what I mean yeah and then and then in order to turn that like content and that investment mm. in terms of return super high mm. and then as you move along that journey you try and do more that doesn't always work mm. um for us and our content like we were really strong on that for a good couple of years yeah. and then probably in the last six months it's dropped off a lot but it's been because we busy. have been, yeah, busy and trying to do like, um, you know, we understand that we've got a lot of the low hanging fruit in terms of new customers mm. from Instagram and yep. in the ways that, you know, we were driving a lot of attention and new people to our Instagram account using things like influencers or um, giveaways and mm. all those things. And that was working great. And now those aren't working um, so well for us. So it's different. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, okay, what other levers do we have to yeah. pull in that space? Not as many. So we've been trying to figure out new ways of like people coming to find out about Girls Get Off. But with that being said, that also means as soon as your attention is somewhere else, like it's so easy to drop off content. Totally. Do you find that the first thing to drop off is content or are you you are, st you are still pretty consistent though? Oh, it depends on my frame of mind, I think. Like it... <sighs> It'll be different types of content, right? Yeah, like different. We'll, yeah. Be, we'll mm. be working really hard on content. Yeah. And then we, we lose won't the even stories to, and the live we won't even We won't even post to Instagram for a yeah. week. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because yeah. they're doing a whole bunch of content. Yeah. But it's not for right now. Or, yeah. it's, or it's stuff that we don't really want to give away. Or yeah. It's for, or not on the fly. Like not on funny, the fly. getting to know you. Yeah. Like, there's a really big difference, I think, when I watch someone's account and I feel really like connected to them and close and like I'm like. Mm. I really know who they are. That's very different from like watching from the sidelines and, and like true. observing. That maybe maybe on. that's that's the key. Like, so you need to do two types of content, and yeah. that's what I'm that's what I'm struggling with. Yeah, because I've got. You know, when I was going away, I'm like, right, I need a month's worth of content done. So we started playing around with different cameras and having someone else edit yeah, the yeah. reels. And they're all forward-facing. We played with, played with all different angles and then kind of got it and then had someone else. So I just made all this content. He edited it and gave me one back each day and it was great. And then there was definitely people who were like, I, I miss you. Daily yeah. I'm like, I'm literally there every day. Yeah, You're getting so much support. But they they did. But then there's it's also... It's almost more, it's more value, but it's not... It's not what they're used to. It yeah. is, but then you know these quick fire recipes, like that's that's good content. Mm. Um, it's recipes on the Pepper Me Club. They, you know, you get big hits on TikTok. It's like it's always expanding mm. your customer base or your followers or, or whatever. So trying to keep up with both is hard. But then I do feel like there's been a big shift with the on the fly stuff, in which most things we do offend some people. Oh, it's wild. They it's wild, eh? Like even yesterday, we got an email. It was just a spam email oh, yeah. for, about re reviewing the Pepper Me hotel. hotel, and we're like, we're horrified yeah, it's at just this. A thing. And it was a spam. It was a yeah. spam email. We put it up because we we're having a laugh, and someone's like, "Well, it's actually your responsibility to expose educate. that and educate people as a spam." I'm like, "No, it's not." It's just, a, but nah. I just, you, you honestly, every day, I'm like, I just feel like I can't do anything. So I've pretty much, I've stepped right back from everything. And then this week, I've been a bit more bold because I'm just over it. I'm like, the internet's so like, yeah. everything's so dark and hard. I'm like, I'm just gonna chuck out. And of course, I've been offending everyone all week. So. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like oh, it's only ever the smallest amount of people, and there's only ever one or two. But then mm. it does, it's, it's. Because the negative always outweighs the totally. positive, like, you know, from, from our mm. human brain and we yep. don't want to be ostracised and we don't want to, like, we don't want to be, like... But you could have um, 2,000 people that like something and they're not going to say anything. Yeah. That's yeah. true. That yeah. is true. And yeah. it's, a, it's the one and it sounds so loud and it feels very, like, yeah. um, you're going to get cancelled and stuff. and it just yeah, makes you worry. Right. You're like, oh, have I done something wrong? Yeah. And then it's you a tough do, balance because you, you also a... do need to check yourself against yeah, yeah, yeah. and be like, oh, you like, do, do yeah. I do that? Uh, where do mm. I stand on yeah. this? Okay, cool, move on. Yeah. 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 But it also should be like a learning exercise, not cancel culture. Yes. Like it's because the mm. it's because the consequence on social media mm. for the last however many years has been like uh, cancel, 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 yeah. cancel. You know, there's yeah. no such thing as yeah. forgiveness. There's no such thing as people making yeah. mistakes. And so mm. people are just Everything's relentless. TikTok commenters, perfect example of like there's just – like that's just the culture on TikTok, is oh, it? Right. So hardcore. Mm. But like, but I also at the same time, I feel like TikTok 
ones almost aren't as serious, like as if it's just like a, I, it's just part of the platform. I find TikTok but, comments very easy to brush off. Yeah. Whereas I find a DM on Insta yeah. like a lot yeah. more. Yeah. Check myself. Like, I mean, yeah. there would be 2,000 people oh attacking me for that lamb, and I just literally think it's hilarious. But if you know, you that those one messages, if they're like really yeah. like pulling yeah. up on something, like, oh, yeah, I'm just tired. You know, like, uh, my ideal now is to come in and we've got the new cameras now, and I can edit them myself. This is great. I'm like, I, I just want to come in, film my videos, make content, make, con make my content, edit them. And then have them to post mm. it like gives me so much freedom. It's the content is I think the content's exceptional. Mm. Like that's by far better than what we've done. And and we've tried to pay people for this sort of content before. Yeah. And this is another interesting discussion about how much people are charging for a reel. Because yeah. I don't think people understand how much creators are charging for. Mm. Oh, in terms of like how much people fee. charge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I guess it's content creators slash influencers. Um, but we, I mean, we'd gone to gone out to a few people or had people approach us and they're charging $8,000 for a reel. Yeah. Or a, po or a post a or a well, giveaway. Well, taking the piss. It depends on like, the, the value is not there. It may be the value for some businesses who have really big budgets yeah. and, and they really don't have the resource themselves. But yeah. in terms of a small business, you need to be get, you need to, if you're going to pay someone something, whether it be an influencer or content like that, you need to be able to get like at least a full time's return on that at some yeah. point in time. And it, you can't just splash out. And the tough part much. is, is it's like that that could be like six months of budget for ads. And yeah. you go, okay, am I going to like spend, you know, two grand a month or yeah. whatever it is, you know, on ads? Or am mm. I going to get someone to post one reel? And this is, reels, and I feel like this is a small business. Um, this is definitely a e-com small business yeah. point of view. Like there's definitely other businesses out there who are like, Absolutely. perfect. Yep. We mm. have no idea. That's great. We need certain We want to be relevant. About, you know, it might be really high ticket yep. items or mm. something that they, it makes sense Two for sales them to, and mm. done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or like, you know, getting people along to some you know, like, huge yeah. furniture store or something like, you know, it just depends on the business. But I feel like for both of our businesses, it's like, it doesn't make sense. No, nah, it doesn't. And and then you kind of look at, I'm looking at what I'm making and I'm like, Mike, I know my content is, is, is better than that. Yeah. With the guts of... These guys are filming on phones, yeah. like the, yeah. I'm like, that's that's a great reel, but then you post it, it gets like the yeah. and you know the um, variation and engagement being from two hundred thousand to one thousand is just wild. I think we're seeing the t the tide turning a little bit in terms of influencers. So they were something that really worked for us a few years ago, and I mean, you guys are your own creator channel anyway. Mm. But I think, and we've always sort of said. The, with TikTok coming in and people not being as loyal, I guess, to their... It's totally not as loyal, as it? Person, mm. ...personalities. And, like, mm. at the end of the day, we're all just competing for attention and where people are just watching mm. whatever they find, like, funny. Or if I think about the things that I send to you, for example, I'll send you something funny. might just be a random meme or yeah. something. I'm not necessarily watching people's stories if they're just showing me, like, sort of a day in the right. life of anymore, yep. whereas I might have previously kept up to date with, yep. like whose kids were what, doing what or, like, what else was happening. So I think there's definitely also a shift in terms of creators being more important and, like, brands themselves being the creators rather yep. than relying yeah. on other influencers yep. for the influence. We yep. see the same thing, yeah, a lot. I, yeah, definitely think the same thing. From... Yeah. But also, but also I think that when the price of that comes down, that may make sense again. Like, if the price of... Um, using an influencer... Using an influencer content, comes yeah. down to reflect the change, yep. then, like, that... It just depends. But, I, I mean, there's always exceptions to the rule. It just depends. It just totally, always depends. Totally. Well, I've always yeah. found TikTok hard because the variability is so different. Yeah. So you could have an influencer that gets fairly regularly with their own content, 2 million views or 3 million views yeah. or whatever. They could do a reel with you and get 10,000 views. And you're like, man, what, what did I even pay for? Yeah. Why didn't that work? Why? And it's just so, like, how do you... Like, whereas Instagram's pretty consistent in terms of, like, engagement. Yeah. Yeah, Instagram is consistent. And I think I've finally, like, we've been, we've been sort don't of get watching that a lot. No. You know? <laughs> no, but you and I have been watching a lot of, like, all, like, TikToks on how, on engagement and, like, what or, like, how to sort of get people. And I, I think it is really coming down to that hook. Yeah. That, like, two or three second hook that you yeah. get in the start of a video. Mm. And we notice that with my Monday video, if I'm hungover and, I'm, and my opening line is, it's Monday, I'm hungover, yeah. you immediately get people's attention. Everyone's yeah. Like, oh, Which up. is so interesting. Yeah. We, yeah, and on Instagram, so, like, the salads have gone real well, but TikTok, massive flop. 
be, they yeah, want absolutely shocking. They want to watch potatoes. Terrible food cheese. for you. Anything with cheese, anything yeah. with meat, like burgers, <laughs> cheese, pulled bread, like that's what they that's what people want to watch. Wow. Yeah. So but you know, but, but Instagram those reels went so good. And yeah. I do think overall for sales the salad salad season in spring yeah. when we've got all that produce and like everyone wants to eat salads like that's surely what people are ma- mainly maybe maybe not mainly cooking but do you guys find that TikTok uh, contributes to sales though no I don't know about sales but definitely it's discovery right yes. yeah we, is it though do we, you find so we went to the from, food show yeah the food yeah, show every okay. second person someone's I've like, seen, seen you on TikTok right. okay cool TikTok, so nice. TikTok. if you're gonna do the TikTok. You do. You need to put yourself in front of them to buy at some point, and yeah. that's going to be a show or a store or a store. But even the store, they need to have it front and centre. Yeah. yeah. And it's easier at a show because um, you've got someone there selling the product, whereas yeah. they can just walk past at the supermarket. Mm. Um, and that's just been overwhelming feedback. So we did quite a few shows this year, and I think we're going to go quite handies next year as well. Cool. Um, with with getting people, and we, you're right. Like. We're, about it before I guess the aim of a show is to break even basically and I think well, by the time you pay for a comm food transport you're shipping pallets of product the stalls use you three or four grand yeah. um you probably are lucky to break even but if you can break even every time it's, it's worth, worth doing because yeah. you're you're getting your product in and the hands and of these people and we know it's a great product and once they start using it they're gonna love it totally. and they're gonna buy it again it's just another touch point. It's another, you know, sort of another step in the conversion, you know, mm. funnel. Like it's they might see an ad on Facebook and then they see you in a show and then finally they see you mm. in a supermarket and they're like, oh, okay, I'll give it a show. <laughs> yeah. Who are your favourite, like who would be your favourite New Zealand or Australia, like, uh, accounts to in general? Uh, my favourite accounts right now are actually, there's a, there's a couple of different ones. There's a DJ in the US called Dylan Francis. Oh, yeah. I just think his content's so funny. Have you yep. seen it before? Yep. Yep. He does yep. like slideshows of like, I don't know, DJ of the week or something like that. Hey, he's just, he's just funny. Okay. And the way that he gets his like, he's created this character for yep. his PA who's called Dave and Dave like follows him around and he just does funny skits that I think are really different. Yeah. Uh, I really like, I obviously think the inspired unemployed lead the charge on the way that skits mm, were done. So yep. they're, they're a classic. Yeah. Um, I do think they've been very smart in monetizing in different yep. ways so that mm. they don't, you know, they've got a podcast now and, and they're pretty funny in that way. Um, who else do I like following? I also like, it just depends. Some, I always, my whole thing on social media is I like to get on the platform and see what other people are doing, and yeah. then like figure out what I can do. It's like for a research tool. Get off. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Although with TikTok, I honestly always end lost. up. I always end up with down the ethical hacking pirates or like border <laughs> patrol path, and I'm like, this is not helpful. This, this is, is so not relevant. I'm like, yeah. at least on Instagram, you can just go and check out the same sort of yes. content. Yes, you can. Amazing how quickly your feed changes. Oh, eh? like I watched like, a few cat videos, yeah. and I'm just, <laughs> I'm so deep in the cat videos. Now. Yeah. I do enjoy it. It's like a mind mindless sort of thing. But it's quite interesting because I just want to make food TikToks. Yep. And you you like to try and you're like, oh, we should try this. We should do this well, dance or we should do this is on trend. And I'm like, I just want to make food videos. Yeah, I, think, I just want to cook. I definitely <laughs> feel like I watch another friend, um, Skincare Davey. He's just like, he's got hooks Oh, he's great. Down. He's yeah. great. He's got hooks I saw down. you had lunch with him the other day, yeah. actually. Um, yeah, really enjoy. Really good. Mm. And he's... Um, he's just ready to leverage everything. It reminds me of when, like, I first started everything, and you're just like, w- when you're and when you're it. like new, when the platform's kind of new, and you're like rolling with it. Yep. Like we're kind of, um, we were like Instagram brands, you know what I mean? So mm. I feel like it's a bigger jump for us where there's like all of TikTok our business brands, happening yeah. as well, and then we've got to learn the platform. Whereas mm. he's got the advantage of being like. He's just starting, so he's got the platform, which yeah, is good. Yeah, true. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. But I think, yeah, it's been good to watch watch that change. And I think now TikTok's different enough, so it kind of has to be its own channel. We're going to have to stop treating it like a um, – Another like place a to second, repost reels. Yeah, we're going to have yep. to stop treating it like a second thing. Yeah. Because I think that's what's um, holding us back. And I think that's why I l- – always sort of want to try some of the little trend things is because it kind of it that's what tiktok is Mm. you know and and it is hard to fit that in amongst food cooking videos but like i don't know it's just even using a relevant sound you know like yeah so what was the other video the other day it's like what does taylor swift and travis 
What's his name? Kelsey. Kelsey. Have to do with your business. It's like yeah. everything. Because <laughs> that is everything on TikTok. Like, yeah. make it tie to food yeah. somehow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, yeah, and it's so fascinating. You're like, you've really got to, people are clever. Like, people are mm. very clever with their, with their, with like making clever content. We don't, we don't do it. We, what we don't do enough is look back at the stats and pick through the videos like really closely and what works. Like, I feel like I kind of do. Um, and the hooks, the hooks very clearly work. I think the overhead filming works. Yep. And you're right. T- different things work on TikTok or, as on Instagram. And then at the end of the day, you're like, I, I need to be the one who's making them because I'm not going to be able to pay someone else eight thousand dollars a reel to to no, make them. No. And then that's where you're like, wow. Do, you know, do you find another in-house cook, or do you get an editor, or or do you just keep trying to do everything yourself? Yeah, I don't know. I think there's a gap that wasn't there at the moment for us. Well, I don't know. I mean, at the moment with uh, this busy period, yeah, come February. Yeah, not. come February, and then we just don't, you know, not. It's been a hard but, year, yeah. and um, yeah, we just got to put the hours in somehow. But, <laughs> mm-hmm. but sometimes you get to the end of the day and you're like, I didn't do anything on stories yeah. for the seventh day, and I'm oh, yeah. it's so stressful, yeah. and you're like, what can I do? Yeah. And then when you've got the pressure on, you're like, and I can't be funny either. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. know what to do. Yeah. yeah, and people like people are just so. People are so fussy about what they want to see now, which is because of TikTok, which is fine, you know. Yeah, and because you're you're competing against everyone and everything that's happening on the mm. platform at the moment. Mm. My oh, like what? Are, yeah, what about your? Do you have any favourite like people? To oh, I've got a few favourites, but I I flip flop, and it's the same sort of thing. Your feed changes so much, and like I found myself yesterday. I almost watched a whole movie on TikTok because it was like, you know, <laughs> clipped into like yeah. three minutes. Part down. seven, part eight, yes. part And I, 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 I was like, I, I watched part time. like 12 and then I was like, and I was like, oh, okay, well, let me go to part one then. And then I had to get the oh. whole way to part 12 to I've see what I was I've watched and a whole like, TV series. Well, I literally, it <laughs> literally got me watching a, a TV series because I saw a couple of TikToks. What and was then, that? Lincoln Lawyer. Oh, okay. I've and then that. and then I saw it on TikTok, and then I was like, "Ah, oh, Haley, we have to watch this." And she's like, "Why?" And I was like, oh, "I saw it on TikTok," and she's like, "So?" And I'm like, "Yeah, well, that one TikTok was interesting, so now we have to watch." And then I was like, watching the whole series. I'm like, "I know something. Like, I know something that happens because I saw it on TikTok. Mm. I don't know when it's going to happen, mm. but I know something." Oh my god! Skipped right to the end. Um, Mine was the Great, and I'd never heard of it oh. before either. But it looks really interesting. Might have to go and watch it. Yeah. Looks good. I keep getting sucked into videos that are like, you know, when people get s- scam phone calls. Oh yes. And then on this, in these ones, I don't know how they do it, but it's called ethical hacking. Yeah. And so the person like takes reverses the call, the thing, yeah, reverses or, yeah, the thing, and goes like then goes like, back into the yeah. scammer's computer yeah. and like starts freaking them out and yeah. like wastes ah, their time as well because right. it'll be like the fifth phone call and they yeah. think they're gonna scam this yeah. old lady out of like tens of thousands of dollars and then they just like and it's like yeah, same thing. So Thirteen good. parts. It's <laughs> like, interesting. It's so interesting. I'm like, how do they do this? Do you um do you use YouTube much? Uh, we repurpose our reels to shorts, to shorts. and that's yeah. about all we do. Does it do anything? Mm-hmm. Not really. I mean, we get a few thousand views and stuff. I think it's yeah. like any platform, unless you're actually going to spend the time and go really deep totally. on it. Like you're not going to, totally. you're only scratching the surface. We, yeah. We're going to put out some YouTube videos around like just how to use the products in terms of like the buttons and stuff. Right. So that from like a customer service exactly point of view, you can yeah. be like, this is how to use it. This is, you know, yeah, so to understand. Do you, what would be, what have been your like biggest hits where you've done something and you're like that? Work. is amazing like uh, influencers used to be huge for us yeah uh in terms of content though in terms of engagement maybe rather than sales in terms of engagement uh in terms of engagement like the sign dancing thing was probably the recent thing yeah. that went really so like well. dance right. for a free vibrator yeah, so i had a yeah. had a sign that said free vibrators yeah. show us your sexy dance yeah. and then i just was in a like a vulva costume and yeah. i had my yui boom playing like up and plop it that was public. great though because you get the old ladies and stuff oh, walking so along funny. loving it or like the random mm, like such a mixed bag past. yeah it was great such a mixed bag yeah. and so yeah that was really cool i think the learning in that was that um, and I mean, I could still do it now, but where Instagram, you don't, you kind of don't want to overcook that stuff. Like you don't want to mm. do it too often, so people get bored. TikTok's TikTok, the complete opposite. I could mm. just make a whole account based on that. Just on that. Yeah, True. you know, like TikTok. I feel like they come to like. I remember a TikTok account, and it cracked me up. Like I went, it was this guy pretending to be an F forty five instructor and being like, oh. "Hey guys, today, okay, yeah. just put your left arm in front yeah. of the thing," and like yeah. getting into all these like weird poses. Yeah. And I thought it was so funny, and I went onto his page, and it was just all those all videos, and it just like 
like it just it's just that instant it's gratification like, mm. like more 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 and it's not even like like you make an account for a niche it's like you make an account for like a sub niche of a niche of yeah. a little sect of people like it's so specific yeah. but that seems to be what gets the engagement and the po- because your whole feed turns into that yeah there's a guy called Jake oh what's his last name what's his last name Jake someone and he's he calls his followers like pussies like no it's octopussy I think oh. is his um <laughs> is his uh, inst- uh, right. TikTok handle and he pretends to be like random things from history so someone might be like oh. can you pr- pretend to be um, I don't know Maybe. Moses when he right. parts the sea or something and so he's like he's like quite camp and he just like pretends to be this like yeah. sassy Moses like come on guys <laughs> like <laughs> he's very funny yeah. and I looked at his TikTok and I watched him grow by hundreds of thousand followers each right. day yeah. yeah he just had that Amazing. really little micro yeah. niche he had it all down pat yeah. so yeah. interesting yeah. and responsive to your audience though I think and I think that's yeah. something that we don't do is is seeing a comment or like trying to engage with the the yeah. comments you know it's like someone asks for the salad cool let's use that yeah. comment tomorrow let's go make that post it tomorrow because you're not like, deep you on it right no well we're not if you were like in tiktok first and you were coming into this now you'd yeah. be obsessed and you'd be like that's that's how i feel because i feel like that's how i was with instagram when it when totally. i was first using totally. that for marketing totally. i was just like obsessed with it totally. and, like, yeah so you know if we're coming into tiktok now you know what we need to do yeah we need to be npcs <laughs> Have you, do you watch any of them? Have you seen any of them? What? The live NPC, lo- the live non-playable characters. So it's like, <laughs> no, nah, see? So this is like, this is, what? and this is all like American, right? Because TikTok creator funders is America, right? Mm-hmm. There's no TikTok creator funder anywhere. And it's people like being characters pretending that they're in a game. Oh, NPC yeah. Car- and, and then they, they just... react to the, all of the, um, all of the donations and stuff. So it's like someone will send them a roses and the no- donations and then they'll like react to it and whatever. But it's the same thing over and over again. Matt? I yeah, I know. Completely they, lost they, me. They, they Sorry. completely like, lost me. Like, you know. Like they're, a, like they're a player in a game. Yeah. Like a, um. What's you know, if point? you're on like PlayStation or something and you're like dressing up your character, yeah. oh, okay. putting a new T-shirt so on or something, and it's yeah. just standing there waiting for you yeah. to like, yeah, oh. choose All right. what like, so, car no, you're no, 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 these no. people, right? They're making like thousands of dollars an hour, right. yeah, off donations. <clears throat> God, so that's hectic. Um, <laughs> not related. To food. Anyway, no, not very okay. positive. Anyway. It just sounds like heaps of work oh, we've got to do. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but every time, well, no, no, whenever I see an influencer's rate card and I'm charging eight thousand dollars for a video, I'm like, why am I working at Pepper and Me? Because yeah. my <laughs> my content yeah. is better than theirs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you're and starting have, to become an influencer. I, I mean, have, mingle no, I'm seasonings. I'm trying to stop. Being, I'm trying to stop being an influencer. Like, it's yeah, so, well, you've got other spice uh, brands. You're too so, funny to stop being an influencer. I like. I just don't want to be an influencer because people don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then, but then I go through this random like. It's literally a two-week period, and someone will send me something, and then I get like six messages being like, "Do you want to receive this box?" And I'm always like, "Ah, go on, sure. <laughs> go on, sure. go on." So like this week, I've had a box of organic tampons, three clean energy drinks with a right. no caffeine. I don't even drink energy drinks. <laughs> a blueberry, four punnets of blueberries, <laughs> some mingle seasonings, oh. and um. Oh, a blender, a hand blender, which is actually real handy. But as soon as you put share something like a cup, oh, and quince paste, uh, quince paste from Rutherford right and my, and they're lovely. Like, but like as soon as I share one, they they come asking me. That's so but I've funny. never done anything paid. I don't think. Like, I hate doing the paid ones because <laughs> they want to know like your insights and they want your plan and you get it approved. I was like, that is not for me. Like, just send it. If I use it, I'll use it. Like, if you're gonna send me a pun of blueberries, obviously you're not gonna get ongoing content from me. Like get stories for a yeah. week. And gone. The, I must like the energy drinks are nice, but they sent me three energy drinks. Like, what what content do you, do you expect for a total cost yeah, yeah, yeah. of eight dollars seventy? You know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so then I'm like, right, I'm never accepting a package again. And then like six months later, I'll do it again, yeah. and I'll have a little random. I think I think we need to get better, and like we need to be targeting people like you, where it's just like, hey, look, we'll send you a hundred bucks worth of stuff, and yes. ask for nothing. You do, and yeah, you do. Do you know what? I think the main thing to remember in this is that we have these conversations now, and I think the reason we are we have the channels we have is because we're really hard on ourselves, and we're always trying to be better. And the reality is, I'm sure a lot of people come up to you and say, I love your content, so good, oh my god, I cooked this last night, or we're, you're actually doing well, it's just that we're just always trying to yeah, feel like you we need to be doing more. To do better. Yeah, but yeah. that's what makes people successful at the end yeah. of the day, is that yeah. we're never satisfied with yeah. anything yeah. we ever do. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a blessing Such a and a curse. Such a satisfying way to live so, life. I just, <laughs> like that's Lord, he hates it. He's like, will you just be happy? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally funny. thought to myself the other day I was like good thing like I'm not competitive and I don't care about winning because I feel like I never win <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah this is a huge win and get back to work the next day and Tree's just like oh why are we doing this <laughs> yeah. come on need you to do this and I'm like, done like twice as much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, yeah I guess you do it's it's quite interesting. You need to practice how gratitude. Yes, we, I need to practice my gratitude. But you're good because you are an optimist and you like – you're a practising optimist, I reckon. I am optimistic. You are. But I also do need to work on my present tense, not always thinking in the future. Right. Because I'm a, I'm a sucker for that too. Just yeah. like, hold on a second. Oh, yep, no – if you two years ago was looking at your life now, you'd be pretty stoked. So exactly. oh, yeah, yeah, true. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. But you're really good at like I honestly I don't think I think that's my favourite thing about you and I always like think of it is that you don't say anything you you like purposefully don't say bad things about other people. Oh yeah, I don't really have bad things to say. Well You don't have bad things to say. <laughs> do, do you know how rare that is? Like do you if you I might unpack I might unpack something yeah, with someone if I'm like I can't really work out why they did this. Or, I've unpacked plenty of things yeah, with yeah, you. But things. you always say, Oh, oh yeah, they no. might have done that because of that. Yeah. Or they maybe that was their reasoning or like I wondered how I could change their train of thought. It's never like Ah oh, shit! And oh they, yeah, no. They hurt me, and they're an asshole, and I'm gonna get a billboard outside their work going in there. But I think I yeah. But I actually, I had a similar conversation with someone the other day. It's like you have to always play above the line on that stuff, though. Or if you're getting upset about a situation, then it's mm. only on you. You're the only one upset in that situation. Or if, mm. you're, if you think totally. someone's wronged you, like yeah. even if they have, well, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. Like you, if they have, then. Yeah. They're fine. You're the only one. Upset. That's true. I just I think it's that's like a, it's such a powerful tool to have in your life to be like, I'm not going to sink down and mm. you know, and it just keep, it lifts your whole level of living when you can think think something you're bad and be like, I'm not going to I'm not going to stand there and say, oh, that person's actually annoying or that person yeah. actually frustrates me or that person shouldn't have done that. Like just turning it around and like. Finding a way to let it go. Sometimes it does backfire when I don't um, identify red flags. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow. Well, come didn't back see into that a room coming. with cups of <laughs> yeah, water. Yeah. Hey guys, I got some water. <laughs> didn't see that coming. Well, they really hurt me. And the people around me are like, yeah. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Was... Open your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy cooking potatoes in microwaves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, I think it's great. I often like, after like need to see you to like be refreshed of that, oh, and then I like you, get, dra- get sucked back into like the negative energy. <clears throat> I'm like, oh no, what would Vivcom I do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I find oh, a conversation so nice. with you about other people is always very uplifting. It's good to um, God, like imagine what what sort of place the world would be if we all just said positive <laughs> things instead of like whinging about things. Totally. Yeah. Anyway, shall we? Anyway. We've got probably still lots to talk about, but um, insane amounts. We're probably getting close to our time. Have you eaten anything nice you want to talk about lately? Uh, Sydney food scene. So, well, do you know that uh, the V on the menu at Elizabeth? Oh, that Elizabeth. was beautiful. Yeah, we've that just been amazing. to Elizabeth Street for lunch. Yeah. What was it? It was like falafel, pita, yeah. pita, salad bits. Yeah. Rice. I'm actually really into. I had some like a Mediterranean sort of. Yeah. This is bread. Maybe a vegan sort of. Plat- yeah, but they just the new menu that just came out today. Yeah, my fa oh, that's good. My yeah. favorite food in Sydney at the moment is like this place down the road that does like shuck shookers and mm. stuff, and like the pita breads are just mm. so warm yeah. and fluffy and Something good. Pita bread is actually like the baked eggs inside the tomatoey lamby yeah. stuff. I'm just mm. like, oh, and the hummus is so smooth. Yeah, <laughs> so smooth, so yum. I saw someone making smooth hummus with lentils the other day, and I'm actually going to try that this week. That's on my to do list. I like love it. So I love a silky hummus. And you know what I ate the other day in Melbourne is that for breakfast I was quite outgoing. You actually would have been proud. I had like tomatoes and stradicella on toast. Oh, oh that's one of my favourite things like, to and eat. And it was like red and and, like, all these yum, juicy tomatoes, and it had green, like, olive oil on it. It was so nice. And you like the stracciatella? Yeah, because it's bland. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, it is that, quite that, bland. It's quite heavy on the creamy, creamy. Like, stracciatella, <laughs> tomatoes, and focaccia would have to be. Yeah. I'm going to put it on the Christmas lunch. It was lunch. so yum. I've decided yeah. we're going to do an Italian long lunch for Good Christmas Day. Nice. Nice yes, I've got rice. some of my Italian olive oil left, and we'll do, yeah. Nice. Mm. Nice. It's gonna be good. Yeah, Elizabeth new menu. I had the um I had the summer toast, which was um basil, pesto, 
tomatoes that marinated feta, mar- they marinate in sea oil. Yeah. 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 Right. So we, well, anything you've eaten that's nice? Oh, we um we had like a s- tasting menu at Armador. Armador? Oh, yes. A special mention. And that was just insanely good. Yeah, I'm so, going so, so, so tomorrow good. night. Yeah. So Armador, they've been doing takeovers around the Bay of Plenty at different places. Special mention, Benny and Brew. Tomorrow we're doing Benny and Brew. And um, the they menu, do catering. The menu looks insane. Insane. I want to read it. Too. Read it out because you, it's so I will so because good. it's so, it's so So like, we went to a, like more of a fish one, which was great for Hayley because she loves that. And I was like a couple of the dishes I just let her have. But there was ceviche and there was um, oh, so much on the menu and it was delicious. What so this got? is what we're having tomorrow night. It's at Ben Embry. It's a burnt eggplant dip and house-made cheese with crocante. Uh, then a rotolo pasta, spinach and ricotta, pomodoro sauce, pums and truffle oil, porcini dust, gambas al... I don't know how to say that. Prawns, smoked butter, white wine, chili, garlic, smoke, smoked pimenton, parsley, homemade focaccia, rosemary, sea salt, creamy polenta, parmesan. I love polenta. Confit, tomato, garlic, and basil. That was delicious. Slow cooked lamb shoulder, Malbec sauce reduction, burnt scallions, that pickled red onion. That was my favourite thing. Okay, I'm pretty excited about favorite that. And then thing. like rocket, orange, toasted grains, and parsley, and then a tiramisu, biscotti, espresso. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. The tiramisu was mean in that they kind of did a little bit of a... Um, Mix on it with the Dolce de Leche. Oh, Did they yum. have um, on here? They didn't have the croquettes. We had croquettes. No, no croquettes, no. and that was so. Delicious. Oh, anyway, I'm very excited. Anyway, Viv's got to go play golf. So yep. th- thanks for coming because you're only here for two nights. So I'm glad we actually got to sneak hey. a podcast in. That's yes, I'm nice. so excited. This was a little impromptu podcast yes. after our content, so this is just perfect. Thanks yep. so much for having me on. You're welcome. Right, easy breezy. Nice Thank Thanks you. Guys. See you next week. Are we back on? We're back on. Are we back on? Yep. Uh, we're back on. on. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. All right. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to the Pepper and Me podcast, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the products that we're talking about, you'll find us at pepperandme.co.nz.